Hello guys, this is Cyprian from FEF All and today we'll talk about linear buckling. So I'll show you how to do that in a very simple manner with the most simple of all the example, a beam which is pinned on both ends. So let's start by creating uh, the beam. So for that let's uh, create an edge which will be exactly at the right dimension. So I'm selecting the 0, 0 and then uh, it will be a beam of 3000 millimeter like that. So now the, the edge has been created. You can see it here. So I can hide the grid and only leave the local axis. Uh, and the second thing is to add the materials and the properties. So I already have some material, the alloy steel, and you can see the properties here. It has elastic models of uh, 210,000. Um, I'm in millimeter unit here, so you have the unit in this corner of the window. And now what I'll have to do is to assign a section to this beam. So I'll assign an I section uh, that I just create, and I will use a bar uh, type of element here. So let's create a section and let's make it an I section. So the, uh, the dimensions are like that, 150, 50, uh, 4.5 and 7, 7. So now I have my section, I click on OK. Uh, and you see that the coefficients here have been automatically calculated from uh, the dimension of this section and the parameter that will be important for us is the inertia in this direction, the I2 inertia. So you, you have to remember this value because I will use it at the end to calculate the buckling load using the formula that uh, I mentioned inside the article on the blog. Um, so let's click on OK. That's done. Now uh, I have to mesh this so go in mesh, 1D mesh, select that. Let's use, let's say, 20 divisions. Let's define an orientation for that. So 1, 0, 0 for the orientation of this beam. OK. And now you see it is meshed and you can see the nodes in blue uh, on, on this model. Uh, let's display the section so you you can sit more uh, visually. So now you have you have now the beam with uh, the section on the screen. Uh, and the next step is to set up the constraints. So let's go here and constraints advanced. And what I have to do is to pin uh, both ends. So if I want it to be pinned, it means that I have to leave. Uh, at least one rotation free. So I will leave this one free, apply, and I have to do the same on the other end, but uh, I, I will apply a load on TZ direction. So I unchecked the TZ, and this degree of freedom will be, um, will be assigned to the load. So now let's assign the loading. So simple force in Z direction and I will uh, define it as minus one. So why I am doing that? I'm doing that because the final buckling load that uh, I will obtain in the results will be equal to uh, the Eigen value multiplied by the value of this load. So uh, if I put one as the value of this load the Eigen value will basically e equal directly to the buckling load. So that's much more convenient for me because you will have directly the value of, uh, of the buckling load. So click on OK. Now uh, the only step left to do is to create a linear buckling analysis. I got it. And just start to solve that. Okay. Let's wait that it computes that, should be quick. Okay, done. Now let's display the results. 
So you have here uh, different type of results. You have the eigenvalues results in the table. You have the total translation. Let's visualize first. Uh, if I was doing linear static, I would get something like that. I would get a compression of the beam in this direction. So that would be the result for the linear static. But here I'm in buckling and the first buckling mode will be like that, actually. Um, and if you expand, you, you see here the value of uh, the first buckling load. So it's equal to uh, 30, 33, 7752. Uh, so is it uh, is it the same than uh, the um, the theoretical value using the formula? Well, let's calculate and see uh, if it is. So let's bring up the calculator. Okay. So I said that it was equal to pi square. So let's just use three. Uh, point one four for the value of pi, so it's a Ross approximation. You have to be aware of that. So this is the elastic uh, modulus multiplied by the inertia. So it's here that we have to remember the value that um, that was displayed in the property. Okay and divide it by the length square. So I will divide two times by 3000. Okay, and this is the theoretical value of the buckling load. Well, uh, approximate because, you know, I did some approximation on pi. And you see that it corresponds to the first, uh, the first let's say, buckling uh, mode. So what is the second buckle mode? So let's say we put a pin in the middle and we block uh, this beam from buckling like that. So we stop this kind of buckling. The second buckling that could happen is like this one. So if the first buckling is, uh, is not possible, it will buckle like that, as you can see. And this will be the second uh, buckling, buckling mode. Let's take a look at other buckling modes. You see that it's it's uh, more and more like that, doing uh, kind of undulations. Okay, that's all for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, and if you you like uh, this video and uh, the article about uh, buckling on my blog fearful.com. Uh, please share it with your friends who are also engineers and who want to understand this kind of topics better. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next uh, post or video.